Cleansing and debridement of an open wound are essential components of preparing a wound bed and reaching a state of readiness for it to heal. Both will be ongoing processes for Mary until complete debridement has been achieved. But we must continue to cleanse the wound with every dressing change. Microbes in the biofilm they may form, exudate and residual dressing materials in and on the wound bed, provide impediments to healthy cellular functions. Encrustations, further dressing residue and scales on the surrounding skin will not only themselves impair cell migration, but also present an environment for microbial growth and consequently repeated wound bed cross-contamination. Cleansing is the use of fluids or devices to remove loosely adherent contaminants, bacteria, remnants of previous dressings and devitalized tissue from the wound surface, edges and surrounding skin and it should be considered part of every dressing change and also after performing debridement. There are many topical cleansing solutions available to clinicians to choose from and it is important to use one that is pH balanced but selecting the right one for Mary's wound and for every patient's wound will depend on local guidelines. The solutions are broadly defined on whether they are isotonic, saline, hypotonic, sterile water, antiseptic or antimicrobial, such as hypochlorous acid or polyhexamethylene biquinide. Debridement is the removal of devitalized tissues such as necrotic or infected tissues, slough, tenaciously attached exudate, debris and loose fragments of tissue or bone, unhealthy cells, microbes and biofilm, and sometimes foreign materials. If debridement is needed as part of Mary's care, we need to accomplish it as quickly as possible for her wound to proceed on a healing pathway. Additionally, devitalized material in her wound bed will provide an environment conducive to growth of microbes. So expeditious removal is key. As we approach cleansing Mary's wound, the type of wound, level of pain, amount and type of exudate, as well as local guidelines, standards and regulations will need to be considered. We need to discuss with Mary the options of how to accomplish the cleansing and our goals for achieving thorough cleansing. If there are choices, we will include Mary in the decision making and enable her to feel as if she has some control. If appropriate, depending on the location of the wound, the condition, if known, of her water source, and Mary's balance, coordination and dexterity, it may be possible to have Mary remove her dressing prior and take a shower and rinse the wound gently before her nurse arrives. If she is unable to do the cleansing herself, her caregiver can cleanse it for her. The skin can be cleansed using a pH balanced soap, antiseptic wash or surfactant removing any residues from the previous treatment as well as dry skin or scales which may be present. The skin surrounding the wound should be cleansed 10 to 20 centimeters from the wound edge or at least where the previous dressing was located. If a compression wrap was used as part of the care, the entire area where the wrap was located should also be cleansed. There are several options for cleansing a wound like Mary's. One can include using a clean bowl with tepid or body temperature solution, using a new cloth or gauze pad each time you dip into the bowl. Her wound can also be cleansed using a tissue-friendly solution, which enables easier removal of surface debris and microbes, reducing the potential for the formation of biofilm. When approaching the wound, cleanse the wound surface in a circular motion starting at the center and moving towards the outer edge of the wound. Her wound should also be cleansed separately from the surrounding skin. There are several ways to achieve wound debridement, including sharp debridement, which may be done at the bedside, or surgical debridement, which is performed in an operating theater. There is also mechanical, enzymatic, and biological, as well as a process called autolysis which can take place when a moist environment on the wound is created to allow natural removal of the body's own enzymes. 
Before we begin to debride, a thorough assessment of her health status, bleeding risk, perfusion, blood circulation, presence of infection and pain level should be considered. Additionally, the site of care, local regulations and guidelines, and the knowledge and skill of the caregiver and health provider must also be considered. If sharp or mechanical debridement methods are to be carried out, the wound should be thoroughly cleansed prior to the debridement, as well as after, in order to remove any debris that was dislodged. The skin should then be patted dry before applying a new dressing. Achieving a clean wound bed, free of unhealthy tissues, exudate and debris, are essential parts of wound bed preparation. Improving Mary's wound bed and surrounding skin will enable her to move on to complete healing. Now that we have seen how we should perform effective wound cleansing and debridement, we are ready to move on to one of our more complex essentials of wound healing in this series, treating and preventing wound infections and biofilm.